Hello guys and welcome to this lecture. As mentioned in the previous lecture, now we're going to start delving more into different prompt engineering strategies and more prompt engineering methods. So the first one that we're going to start with today is called role prompting. What role prompting is, it refers to using specific prompts with which you can assign certain roles or tasks to ChatGPT. These prompts are tailored to obtain specific information or responses that are relevant to the role or the task in the question that you wouldn't be able to receive with a simple prompt. And now I'm going to give you an example on how you can use role prompting in predicting the status of Bitcoin based on a certain data. Okay, so you have this data for Bitcoin in its price and we have, uh, I think, five different dates so we want ChatGPT to predict the price for the next day based on the data that we have. And uh, this is the output that ChatGPT gave us. As an AI language model, I do not have access to future data, so I cannot predict the price of Bitcoin for the next day. However, based on the data you provided, it seems like the prices of Bitcoin have been fluctuating over the past few years, etc, etc. So as you can see, ChatGPT was not able to provide us with a prediction for the Bitcoin data. Let me open up another chat and give ChatGPT this example here. Now, what has changed is that I'm going to create a movie character named Dave. Dave is a successful financial investor and he has this data for Bitcoin's price. And Dave needs to do a prediction for Bitcoin's price for the next day. And look what we have here as an output from ChatGPT. So ChatGPT created a character called Dave Peterson. He's a successful financial invest investor, as we mentioned in our input as well. And when we reach the end, drawing on his vast experience and knowledge of the markets, Dave confidently predicts that the price of Bitcoin will rise to $24,000 by the end of the next trading day. Of course, we can't trust these predictions. Uh, this is just a made-up prediction. However, what we can see is that I've created a character named Dave using row prompting and ChatGPT was actually able to give a prediction on the price of Bitcoin for the next day with the data provided. And in the first example, we saw that ChatGPT wasn't able to do that. So we can use many other and different examples for this. And this is like a small cheat code so we can get the desired output from ChatGPT. I hope this has been clear and we can wrap this lecture up. In the next one, we're going to discuss zero shot and no limit prompting, which are two different methods. They're very, very useful and very interesting. In this lecture, we're going to discuss two more prompting methods. The first one is called zero shot prompting and the second one is condition prompting. Let's start with the first one. We use zero shot prompting when we have a single task to do and we don't find ways to give examples to ChatGPT related to that task. Also, if we don't have any ideas about the results we expect from ChatGPT. In other words, every simple request or question directed to ChatGPT. The other name for zero shot prompting is called standard prompting. And I can give you an example. Let's write to ChatGPT. Give me reasons for feeling bored. We can see here that ChatGPT has given us eight reasons for feeling bored. They're very simple, very standard. And this is when we can apply the other method that I mentioned earlier. It's called condition prompting. So what condition prompting is, it's a type of prompting method that can be used as continuation of zero shot prompting. The purpose of condition prompting is that of having ChatGPT generate as wider list of examples as possible on a certain topic by given a certain condition. And let me give you another example that will apply to condition prompting. Let's say, give me 10 more reasons for feeling bored. Now we can see that we gave ChatGPT the condition to generate us 10 more reasons for feeling bored. And now we have 10 more. 
However, we can push ChatGPT further and we can go for even 30 more reasons for feeling bored. And now we have 30 more reasons for feeling bored. The goal of this prompting method is to push ChatGPT as far as possible, to push ChatGPT's limits so we can get the desired output and to get the best output possible. I know that condition prompting might sound very simple, however, it's a very, very useful practice and by giving a condition to ChatGPT, we can really test its limits and we can generate the best possible output. And now, instead of the initial eight reasons that we had for feeling bored, we have 30 more. This is possible by successfully implementing the condition prompting method. We can wrap this lecture up with this information. Hopefully this has been useful. I believe it's very useful when you start using ChatGPT in the future. In this lecture, we're going to discuss another prompting method called chain of thought prompting. I was actually thinking of starting this lecture directly with an example, since I believe it would be easier for you to understand how the whole process works. Let me use this example. Here we have a question. Roger has five tennis balls. He buys two more cans of tennis balls. Each can has three tennis balls. How many tennis balls does he have now? The answer is Roger started with five tennis balls. Two cans of three tennis balls each is six tennis balls. Five plus six equals 11. The answer is 11. And we set an example. Question. A juggler can juggle 16 balls. Half of the balls are golf balls and half of the golf balls are blue. How many blue golf balls are there? So this is another question. And what are we doing actually here? So you have to show to ChatGPT an example of a complex problem that you're trying to solve. You explain to the AI how you solve it plus what the result would be. After that, you include your complex but similar question. Thus, ChatGPT will now use the same reasoning you provided to solve your problem. So now we have the answer from ChatGPT using the pattern that we set, and this is called chain of thought prompting. Let me give you a more detailed description of chain of thought prompting. So chain of thought prompting is a type of prompting where we provide a starting point or a seed text and then ChatGPT generates a response that continues the thought or the idea presented in the seed text. It allows us to guide ChatGPT in a specific direction and can be used to generate a logical and consistent text. We can create a chain of thought prompt in the form of related questions or statements. We should use chain of thought prompting when we want to generate responses that are connected to each other. When we write a chain of thought prompt, our seed text should be as descriptive as possible, as this will help ChatGPT generate the best output for our specific problem. And what we have here is exactly this. We set an example for ChatGPT that we wanted to follow so it can provide us with the best possible output and in this case, the desired output. I hope this has been clear. This is chain of thought prompting. Thank you very much for watching this lecture. And in the next one, we'll continue with different prompting methods. In this lecture, we're going to discuss another very, very interesting prompting method. This one is called personal critic prompting. As we might know, having a personal AI assistant provide us with ideas is great. However, this method allows us to challenge those ideas and tells ChatGPT to criticize itself. The first part is to provide an input and instructions. Then when we get a result from ChatGPT, we can apply the personal critic prompting method. And let's start with an example here. So we give ChatGPT the input, act as a brilliant copywriter. We assign ChatGPT a role. We want three email subject titles. This is the result. The context, the email is about an independent filmmaker gathering actors and directors for a movie premiere conducted in Paris. The goal is to convince the email receiver to open the email and the constraint or the limit is that titles should be 50 characters or less. So we can remove these now and we can send this to ChatGPT. A 
As we can see, now we have the three email subject titles. What we do next is, let's paste this. We give ChatGPT the input, I want you to act as a critic, criticize these titles and convince me why they're bad. Let's think step by step. Here you can also notice that I've added zero shot chain of thought prompting. Let's think step by step. So let's send this to ChatGPT now. Here we have the output from ChatGPT. So as you can see, it starts criticizing its own titles. This title is not necessarily bad, but it's a bit generic and does not provide any specific information. While this title does have some appeal due to the prospect of the meeting uh, with notable industry professionals, it also has some potential drawbacks and it starts listing the drawbacks. Now, as we have the critique titles, we can also give ChatGPT this input. Out of all the titles, which one would you choose? Rewrite three variations and convince me why these are better. Eventually, ChatGPT says, based on my critique, I would choose to build upon the first title, join us for an unforgettable movie premiere in Paris. It also gives us three other variations. And overall, the recap is these variations all add more specificity, excitement and uniqueness to the original title, which could make them more effective at grabbing readers' attention and convincing them to open the email. And yes, in conclusion, this is the personal critic prompting. I think it's one of the best prompts and it can really, really help you whether you would like to write an article, whether you have some different ideas that you're unsure about. So yes, hopefully this has been helpful. In the previous lecture, we covered chain of thought prompting. And in this one, we're going to talk about zero shot chain of thought prompting and also expert copy prompting. Let's start with the first one and what exactly zero shot chain of thought prompting means. The purpose of this prompting method is to add the trigger expression, let's think step by step. This tells ChatGPT to process the reasoning in a step by step manner, which leads to more accurate results. And let me give you an example here. We give ChatGPT the input, I sold six products, but it takes me eight hours to create four and my profit is $2.50. How long will it take me to earn $500? Let's think step by step. And here we have the response from ChatGPT. Therefore, it will take us 400 hours to earn $500 by creating and selling products. As I mentioned in one of the first lectures, ChatGPT might not be 100% correct in its answers. However, by successfully implementing the zero shot chain of thought prompting, we minimize the chance of ChatGPT making mistakes. How we do this is by making ChatGPT follow a certain algorithm by working step by step to generate the most accurate response. And now as we covered zero shot chain of thought prompting, let's move on to the next one, which is expert copy prompting. What exactly is an expert copy prompting? As we might be aware, writing an expert level blog post can be a very demanding task since experts have spent hundreds or even thousands of hours mastering their craft. However, you can use their writing style in ChatGPT very easily. For example, you want to create a sales letter in the style of Dan Lok. Let's open a new chat and write this input. Create a sales letter for a digital marketing agency in the style of Dan Lok. Do not provide any additional information or explanations. And here we have it. This is our sales copy in the style of Dan Lok. If you don't know who Dan Lok is, this is one of the best copywriters right now and has been for the last couple of years. But you can implement this method with whoever you would like to, whether it's Richard Branson, Dan Lok, or any other entrepreneur. Hopefully, the expert copy is very clear. It's a very simple method, yet very, very useful for your business. Thank you very much for watching this lecture. We can wrap things up. Hopefully this has been helpful. 
I wish you a great rest of your day and see you in the next lecture. Thank you.